Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. So I know I've talked about these kind of things, just bits and pieces, um, but it has kind of really been recent cemented on my heart, I guess, with just different posts I've read, different um, videos I've watched, and uh, just something I wanted to share. Not, not because of being frustrated with any situation or anybody, just my thoughts on how I um, have felt about it over the years and how um, I, I continue to feel about that. And that is this idea of, um, I guess the technical term would be the social model of disability and um, the medical model of disability. The social model is looking at, okay, you've been dealt these cards, this is um, you know, the situation you're in, what can we change in the environment around you to make life better for you? And then the medical model is essentially saying, you're the one that needs to have something changed. You know, whether we need to find a cure or, or whatever, like not, not coming alongside you and saying, you know, it's, it's okay that that's the way that God made you. Let's, let's figure out how we can come alongside you and, um, and work on things, you know, make, make that better for you by, um, you know, changing changing up what's you know at the house or, or church or whatever and so um there there's a popular youtuber um and her name's molly burke and she's blind and she um was the one that helped helped me, I guess, understand that there's, like, actual names for it. I didn't realize that it would, you know, there was the name of, um, hold on, uh, maybe, there we go, sorry guys, she, she helped me realize that there's the name of, um, medical model and social model, and I, I didn't realize that, but, I made the shift in my own life, I would say at a very early age. Yeah, there's been times in my life where I'm like, yeah, it would be nice, you know, if I could turn over my left hand and if I could walk heel toe um, with my left foot. Yeah, there are times where that would be nice. But I'm also super excited and, and grateful for the opportunities that my situation has given me. The people I've met, the conversations I've been able to have, like that fires me up, that gets me excited, that brings a smile to my face and brings me joy. Um, and and I, don't, I don't see myself as a person, you know, having that same platform or ability or whatever you want to call it um, if I didn't have the situation that I have. And so at, when I was younger, th there was times when I was like, you know, I want to be healed. I went um, and visited my aunt and uncle in Arizona once and there was a healing ceremony at their their church and the service and I went to it and you know did the things that were asked of me and whatever um but it was awkward like that is not an experience that I want to go through <laughs> ever again um because it was it I, I was too young to understand fully what was going on so it was awkward and so the first thing that I have been thinking about listening to podcasts and things that's been brought to my attention is 
when churches talk about healing or have healing services or ceremonies or whatever, that can be traumatic or, or traumatizing um, or just take people back that haven't been healed. And it can almost make you feel worse about your situation. Like, oh, I haven't been healed. You know, what's what's wrong with me? Is my relationship with, with the Lord not where it should be? Um, am I doing something wrong? Is there sin in my life that's preventing that? You know, what's what's going on? And as as a church, as the body of Christ, um, as a believer, I would never want to do or say anything that would make somebody feel less, especially about something that they can't control. And so that helped me, you know, think about and realize the types of conversations that I have around people and what I say, like I need to be sensitive to the fact that they might have had something in their life that was traumatizing um, related to that topic. So it's good to remember to be sensitive to that. And it's it was good to get in tune with my own feelings of why when people are like, oh, we're going to do this study on healing and we're going to do this and that, like, that makes me uncomfortable. Like, I, I, don't, I don't want to think about that time in Arizona as a child and what I was asked to do, you know, years after, because that's not what God had for me, you know, so I don't want to dwell in the past and think about that moment. That was one thing I thought about, and it, it's neat to see that not only in the secular world or, you know, people in their everyday lives, a lot of those people are coming to the point of realizing, hey, this this is the way I am, you know, this is this is the life I know, um, and don't want to change it because you you work your whole life learning how to deal with the situation that you're in, <coughs> work through the situation you're in. And then if something were to happen overnight and like if my vision went completely normal, if I no longer walked with a limp, if I was able to um, turn my left hand over completely, there are a lot of things that I would have to learn differently um, than I do them now. You know, like, the thought of having complete vision, as, ex as exciting as that might be, then the, then the thought of pressure of being asked to drive and driving being put on me, like, that is something I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't know what I want to deal with. So, it, it, you get used to what um whatever situation you're in and so you know when when that changes then there's that that learning curve and then there's the other side of it of if we're always focused on being healed and there being a cure like must find a cure must find a cure i understand that for some things like cancer like I I see and I understand why that's very important to find a cure or a situation like MS where it's going to eventually take you um, or other things that at the end you know there's a essentially a death sentence those things I could I totally understand and see why you'd want a cure but like cerebral palsy and it's totally okay if you disagree with me this is my opinion cerebral palsy there's there's such a wide range and umbrella of levels and things that people go through um with cerebral palsy that it 
that you're not gonna be able to find a cure for everything. So that's why I think it's better to pour funds and money and time into saying, okay, this is the cards you've been dealt. This is your, your situation. How can we take you the way you are and come alongside you and make your life better by changing the things around you? Not changing you, but changing the things around you. So whether that's building a ramp. Um, we're in the process of getting a ramp built at our house for Miss D so that she can wheel in and wheel out. Whether that's getting a child that can't walk on their own a wheelchair. Yes, maybe they will have the opportunity to walk with a walker someday or crutches, but right now they pr- might be at the stage of needing a wheelchair and that's okay. But, um, oh, I can't remember her name. There is a lady that was an author. Well, her mom wrote the books. Karen. Her name was Karen. And um, she was going through cerebral palsy many years ago. And so at the beginning. And she, you know, went through the braces and learned how to walk with the crutches and the braces. But then she got to the point where she's like, you know what? I realize I have more freedom and more energy if I use a wheelchair. You know, for those that, yeah, they can walk, but maybe it just takes them a really, really long time. Um, they, they might choose to use a wheelchair because it's faster and easier for them. I remember growing up, Um, in grade school, there were these twins, amazing girls. Um, I I feel blessed to got, to have the, have had the opportunity to get to know them. Um, one was in a wheelchair and one used crutches. And there were times though, that it was faster and easier for the one that used crutches to use a wheelchair, you know? So she was a part-time wheelchair user. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I think a lot of it is just needing to, to change our mindset and, and to look at things differently. You know, just as um, we sometimes struggle to, to look at a person that might be a different color or have a different accent or whatever, you know, because they're different, your, your first thought is to look and just, you know, wonder. It's the same thing with disability. The point is that it doesn't stop there. You have questions? Ask. Don't just stare. You know, get, get to know them. Build that relationship. Don't assume that everybody is in the same box, that it's just, oh, that poor little girl, she probably just wishes her life was so much better and that she could be healed and maybe. But I can tell you, Miss D has found joy right where she's at. She's not a two-year-old thinking, I wanna be healed. I don't wanna be in this body anymore. No, she has found joy right where she's at and that's where we all need to get to like look around you what can you see in your day that brings a smile to your face what do you see in your day that you can be thankful for so um sorry this is kind of all over the place but it was just some thoughts that i had been having lately and i wanted to record them so that i could look back on them myself and and remind myself that I do not need to be fixed. Um, Miss D does not need to be fixed. We come alongside her in the situation she's at to help her be the best that she can be. 
and that's what my parents did for me and I'm so grateful for it so I hope you have a wonderful day full of many blessings and we'll see you next time bye god bless thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe